Hello, everybody. Hey, hey. All right, so I'm just going to tell you all that on Wednesday at 7.05, I'm doing a free webinar that talks about how you can start buying your first rental property. Okay, and if your first rental property is a piece of land, fine, we're gonna talk about it. If your first rental property is an apartment, fine, we're gonna talk about it. If your first rental property is a house, either that you bought to be a rental property, or if it's a house that you moved out of and you accidentally became a landlord, we're gonna talk about all that. And before I started this, I checked and I have 40 people signed up for the webinar so far. That means 40 people are going to be in front of you to find out how they can retire sooner, make more money, be happier, and I mean, what else do you want? Retire sooner, make more money, and be happier. What do you want? I can't do anything else for you, okay? But first thing tonight, um, and maybe if Ashley signs on, maybe she'll drop the link so that you can sign up while I'm talking to you. Because this is going to be one of those free webinars that's going to like light your pants on fire. Okay? And good. Julie says she's in. Julie, if you have the link, if you drop it in for me, that'd be awesome. Um, it's on my Facebook page and it's in the cash flow group if you need to go find it real quick. That'd be stellar. Thanks, bud. Um, okay, so let's talk about your excuses though. Because I hear excuses all the time as as to why people don't have a real estate portfolio or a rental house or all this other stuff and I want to call bullshit on all of those excuses okay because I want to tell you that I have talked to a couple tonight and they called they set up an appointment to call me tonight and they basically gave me the parameters of what they were working with and we got on the phone and they were like okay so here's the deal with We've got a hundred grand that we need to invest because we're not making any money on it. And I was like, yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that people are walking around with a hundred grand in their pocket. Like it does not surprise me at all that people have that much money because this is like the second or third couple that have come to me in the last two or three weeks. And they're like, all right, wait, here's the deal. I've got a large chunk of change and you're always talking about people that don't have any money. But what about those of us? Thanks, Julie. The link is right there. If y'all want to sign up for the webinar, we got plenty of space for everybody right now, but I won't be able to say that probably tomorrow. So go ahead and get your seat tonight. The link is right there. Julie put it up for us. Okay. But they said, you know, we've got a lot of money and you're always talking about people that don't have a lot of money and how they can get started in real estate. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot that people do have a lot of money. And if you have a lot of money and it's in a 401k, your money is dead. Your money has already died. If you have it in a 401k, if you have it in an IRA, if you have it in the stock market, it's like on a sinking ship, okay? The only way that I know of you can make money live, and I mean like live and breathe and outlive you, the only way that you can make your money outlive your children or make your money outlive your grandchildren is to have it in real estate, because think about it like this, if you have money in a 401k and you're a regular nine to five worker and that's like, you know, what you thought life was gonna be about, you go to college, you get a job, you get married, you buy a house, you get a mortgage, you have kids, you retire and you die. If that's what you think life is, then that's fine, I feel sorry for you, but that's fine. But a lot of those people have dead money in 401ks. And if you have dead money, it's not too late to save it. You're going to have to pay some taxes if you want to save it, but it's not too late to save it. If you have money in a 401k, my friend April will help you put it into a self-directed IRA so that you can put it into real estate or llamas, whichever one you want. The other thing is if you have $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 and you got it either from an inheritance or you got a trust fund or you got an insurance settlement or you've got, you know, you just saved a bunch of money and this is your life savings, there ain't nothing wrong with going and buying some property. 
you, I was on a chat just a couple minutes ago with uh, some of my friends in Florida and he's made a whole bunch of money in the last two months and he's like, I really want to put this in real estate. Somebody please tell me where to put this. And he looks at it and he's like, oh my gosh, these are crappy returns. And I was like, wait a second. You can't just look at the next six months and see that you're going to get crappy returns. You have to look at the slow play. You have to look at the long play on real estate. And if you've got a hundred grand and you keep it in the bank, you're going to make what? 0 0.0125, 0 0.025 interest. That's no money at all. Okay, that doesn't even keep up with inflation. If you have a hundred grand in the bank, you do not have a hundred grand in the bank because tomorrow you're going to have ninety nine thousand and twenty dollars, and the next day you're going to have ninety nine thousand and two dollars, and every day it's going to come down just a little bit. But if you take that $100,000 and you put it in something that's going to make you 6%, maybe you got a 6% cap on your uh, apartments, that's cool. I've got a 14% cap on my apartments. That's 14%. Show me that in your stocks. Show me that in your savings account. Show me that in your mattress fund. Okay, like if you have money and there's a lot of people out there that have money, they just don't know which avenue to put it in. And I say put it in real estate and they're like, oh, I don't know about real estate. I heard somebody lost a, money, a lot of money there. And I'm like, yeah, well, they probably didn't have a plan. They probably didn't have a strategy. They probably didn't know what the hell they were doing. And yeah, just like anything, if you just throw money out and you don't know where it's going, you probably lost it. Probably made it a bad investment. But if you have a plan and you know where you're putting money, you know why you're putting your money there, and you know how long it's going to take before your money doubles, triples, makes 14%, then it's a no-brainer. Okay? I talked to another friend um, this morning, and he was like, you know, I've got money, and I've had money, and I've thought about putting it in real estate, but nobody has like sat down with me and looked at me and my goals and said that I need to be making X amount. I have this much and I can be making that much in 18 months, but nobody has sat down and like walked me through that. Nobody has told me we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do the other so that I can get to my end goal because you know, and this guy told me, he was like, I've always wanted to be a real estate investor, but it's f so full of these uh, slick haired used car salesmen at these boot camps. And all they really want to do is upsell you on something. And I don't want to give them my money. I want to actually figure out how to buy real estate and make money at it. Hi, my name is Whitney Nosley, and I'm going to show you how to be a real estate rock star. <laughs> I take people just like that. I had a woman sign up for my VIP program today, like a one-on-one, -on -one, three-month, like really intensive, gonna get it done kind of deal. We spent like two or three hours on the phone today just talking about her and her goals, what she knows, what she's tried, what she's learned, and how I can twist that and squeeze every last penny out of these deals. Because she's throwing money away right now. She's an agent and she knows regular real estate. And y'all, that is a dinosaur. It is dying. Listen to me right now. If you think you're going to go to the bank and put 20% down on a house and have it pay off after 10 years, you are silly. And you are fooling yourself. And you have bought into the lies. That's not how we buy real estate these days. You can use cash. Lots of people have lots of money, lots of money. You know, they got 25, 50, 100 grand. They got 200,000. They need to know how to spend it to get it back and to make it grow, make it 10x like Grant Cardone talks about. I can show you how to do that. In fact, I'm going to show you how to do that Wednesday at 7.05. I almost said 7.07, but it is 7.05. Wednesday. There's a link. Julie dropped it in the uh, comments here. You can sign up. Before I started this, I had 40 people signed up. That means 40 people are getting ahead of you in the real estate game. And it is an old man's game because there aren't enough young people ready to embrace this wonderful landlord lifestyle. 
okay? The more young people I can get involved, the more people that don't have money. You can buy houses without any money. That's not a big deal. I talked to an agent last night and I asked him, I was like, hey, so I hear Eric from Vince, what do you have? And he was like, oh, well, we have all of this stuff and I can send you a list and I can get you on my email. Like, no, no, no. What do you have? Because I'm an investor and I'm not working with another agent that doesn't have their own portfolio because they haven't got it yet. If you think you're going to make money and be able to retire as a real estate agent, off what? If you don't have a closing, you don't make any money. You are literally making pennies while the investors who have figured it out are making thousands and you're doing all the legwork. Pass. Uh-uh. I'm also not working with any agents that don't have their own portfolio. I'm not working with any insurance agents that don't have real estate investments. I'm not working with anybody that's going to help me in real estate if they don't understand real estate. Okay? One of the things that we talked about earlier today is that if you've got money, you can go find all sorts of properties for $2,000, $7,500, $20,000 and they will pay you back. You will have your money back in 18 months, 24 months. And I think seven years is par. The old and slow method says that if you get your full investment back in seven years, you had par. If you get it back in five years, that's what? A birdie? I don't really know golf terms. But if you get it back faster than seven years, the old guys say you're winning. Okay, because it probably took them 15 or 20 years to even figure this crap out before they could even figure out if they were making any money. I've got a plan and a strategy. It's actually a formula and it's not anything that I made up. It's stuff that every investor I know across the country uses. The thing is, when a wholesaler, when a regular investor, when a cash investor goes in and they make a seller an offer, they give them one price, usually chops their knees out from under them, and the seller or the agent gets a bad taste in their mouth for investors, and it gives the rest of us a bad name. So on Wednesday, I'm going to do this webinar and I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you my formula that I use. I'm going to teach you seven different ways that you can buy real estate. Some ways use cash, some ways don't use cash, some ways use other people's cash. And it ain't that hard to find money. Okay? Out of all the people that are going to watch this video right now, if I really tried, I could find enough money to go buy any house I wanted to tomorrow. Don't get hooked by some fancy marketing scheme that says that you need to spend a whole bunch of money and spend a weekend with somebody so they can teach you how to find private money. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Okay? And don't spend five or $10,000 for a weekend boot camp so some guru, some old man doing it the old and slow way can teach you how to do the new style of real estate on the internet. Nah, dude. I want to learn how to use the internet from somebody who's actually using the internet. I have a buddy has over a hundred houses, barely knows how to turn on his laptop. He likes the paper. He likes a file cabinet full of paperwork. And I think he is missing tons of deals and tons of leads and tons of opportunities because he's just not online. I'm online. I'm going to show you six different ways to find off-market properties. When I say I only work with agents that have portfolios, I mean I like barely work with agents ever. In fact, this year I can't think of one deal I've done with an agent. I do know that last year I sold two agents houses using lease options and owner financing. Two of my 15 houses last year came from other agents because they were like, I don't, I give up. I don't know what you know. I need to know what you know, but right now I don't have time to learn it. And as long as there's agents out there that recognize that there is a new way, there is a fast way to do real estate without going to the bank, without waiting on an appraisal, without waiting on somebody's permission, without waiting on underwriting, without putting 20% down, oh my gosh, please shoot me if that was the only way to do real estate because it's not and it's boring 
And eventually, when I can get enough people on board with the new fun way to do real estate, other people will realize how crappy that system is. <laughs> okay? You don't need to do that. You are wasting money that way. Wasting money. And I hate wasting money. It's twice as worse as wasting time. So, if you want to know seven different strategies to buy houses, buy your first rental, use what you have, or tweak what you know, I'm doing a free webinar Wednesday night at 7.05. 7.05 on the dot. There's a link. Julie, if you're still on here, post that link up again, please, and sign up. I had 40 people signed up before I started this video. I expect to have 80 when I wake up in the morning. I'd like to have 500 people on this webinar Wednesday night because that's 500 people I get to help. And if I can help you, then you can go help sellers and then you can go help buyers. It's like a never ending train of people that you can help once you figure out the right system. I talked to a woman today. She is living in Spain. She is originally from France and she wants me to teach her how to do real estate internationally. Okay. I have a student right now in Spain investing in California. So tell me what's your excuse again? Oh, hold on. I have a list of your excuses. Okay. Don't tell me these excuses again because I'm getting tired of them. First one, you're scared. What are you scared of? We've got a formula. We've got three or four exit strategies. We've got 16 different ways to get rid of this property. We've got four or five different ways to buy this property. And then we have an out clause if it ain't going to work. What are you scared of? You're scared of succeeding, aren't you? That's what it boils down to. You're scared of going from your regular nine to five, making two grand a month, to bringing in two grand a month on the fifth just for waking up. That makes you uncomfortable, doesn't it? Making more money than what you're used to, making more money than what you have allowed yourself to think that you deserve, that makes you uncomfortable because what if your mama finds out you're making money? What if your friends find out you're making money? Maybe that'll encourage them to go make some more money. My friend Suze used to hate hanging out with me, okay? Because after I graduated college, I kept signing up for this continuing education and that continuing, and I wanted to get this degree and that certificate and all this stuff. And before she knew it, she was back in school too, learning how to do this and that and the others, taking all these classes. She was like, seriously? Can't we just go like have some wine or get a drink or something? I was like, no. There's too much to do out in this world than sit around and watch TV and drink wine every night. Let's go make some money, honey. That way, in three or four years when we're 35 and retiring, we can watch all the TV we want to. Except we won't because we'll have, you know, fancy beach houses and stuff then and we'll be sitting out watching the waves. Ain't nobody got time to watch TV. <laughs> okay. The second excuse I hear is that you don't know where to start. What do you need to do first? First, you need to sign up for this free webinar that I'm doing on Wednesday. Let me show you seven different ways to get your first rental property. Get your first, get your portfolio started. Learn some of the words. And that's actually number three. And uh, one of my buddies I was talking to earlier today, Brian, he was like, I just don't know the language. I mean, like, I hear you talking and I hear you say real estate and I hear you say things like rent and mortgage and no money and no credit. And I hear you saying all these words and I know they're English words, but I have no idea what you are saying with. I mean, what is a comp? Tell me, what is a comp? Well, a comp is a comparable sale in the neighborhood. If the house next door to this one sold for a hundred, this one's probably worth a hundred. Probably. Okay. We'll get into all of that stuff. And I think this is also what kind of confuses people is I speak English, but I speak it on like a real estate tilt, kind of, if you will. And that basically just means that I just use words that you're not used to yet. 
But it's all regular words and it all breaks down into regular terms that anybody can understand. I mean, I'm just a redneck from Tennessee. I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm not a physicist. I'm probably not as smart as you are. I just know how to work real estate. I'm a real estate matchmaker. I find people that want to sell a house. I find people that want to buy a house. I make a bunch of money in the meantime. I actually make a shit ton of money, but mama doesn't like it when I say that. <laughs> so don't let my language, don't let the words, don't let them, um, like hurt your pride. Like you feel like you should know this. Like you're an adult. I'm an adult. I use these words. You don't know those words. That's fine. If you're an accountant, I probably don't know half the words you use, but that's why I pay you. Go use your words and keep me out of the IRS's deal. Okay. Don't let the words scare you though. And don't let them confuse you because I probably have an example or I probably have a story that will help you like break it down. Okay. I speak regular English. Nothing crazy. Um, somebody else told me, uh, a lady I spoke to this morning told me that she just didn't have time. How much time could it take? Literally, I have made appointments to go buy a house at the grocery store, at the credit union, because I knew how to talk to people so they would confess all their real estate sins to me. And then suddenly I'm going out and making an offer on their property. But that scares a lot of people, okay? Because they don't know how to start that conversation. They don't know how to find the comps. They don't know what words to use. And they just don't know what to do. And so they don't do anything. That's the worst thing you can do. How are you going to go from $3,000 a month to $20,000 a month if you don't do something different? If you do the same thing forever and ever, amen, you will get the same results. Because guess what? It's not a fairy tale. And last time I checked, some knight in shining armor isn't going to come through and whisk you up and carry you away to the land of opportunity. Okay? That just doesn't happen. Real estate investment deals are happening every single day. And if you're not getting in on them now, you're missing a huge opportunity. In fact, people say the market is dead in the fall and winter. I completely disagree. The best time, the most motivated sellers are at the end of the year. November, December, you can pick up stuff like this. You think you're motivated until somebody says, hey, you're going to pay taxes on these things if you still have them at the end of December. And suddenly everybody's a seller. Everybody wants to get rid of everything. And they are making deals right and left in November and December. And you better have the strategies in place to back up your offers. Okay. Uh, the other thing is people don't want to be landlords because they don't want to get 3 a.m. phone calls. Hello, hire a property manager. That's what Julie's for. Okay. Hire somebody. One, if you pay a property manager 10%, that's like what? 50 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks a month. Now you don't have to worry about any toilets clogging up at 3 a.m. You literally pay somebody to take that pain away from you. And whatever you pay them, you get to take off on your expenses on your taxes. Now what's your excuse? You're paying somebody to help you and then you get credit back for it. What else do you want? <laughs> Hire a property manager, hire an attorney, hire an accountant, hire a pest control guy, okay? All these people help you make more money. Don't be cheap and don't try to do everything yourself because you'll burn out, you'll drive yourself crazy, you'll drive your wife crazy, your husband will want to sleep on the couch because you're not a happy person when you're stressed out about money. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Wednesday, 7.05. Sign up for the webinar. Um, another excuse is that you have bad credit. Okay, so yes, some people are walking around with $100,000 in their back pocket. Some of us. Others of us have ugly credit 
and a really strong work ethic, <laughs> okay? Something just happened and we had bad credit. It could have like completely not been our fault. I talk to people all the time. They had bad credit because they were married to an idiot. And they didn't realize that the money wasn't being used on what it was supposed to be doing. That's not their fault, right? Or people go to the hospital and don't have enough insurance and then they got medical bills, they can't pay them, and boom, their credit shot. That's not really their fault. They didn't plan on getting sick, right? Or small business owners. Small business owners have terrible credit. Even if they've been in business for 10 or 15 years, they have terrible credit because nobody wants to give them credit. But they're great people to work with. They usually have a pocket full of money. So don't use credit as an excuse because the last, I don't know, every house I've bought, <laughs> have, nobody's asked me for my credit. I've got 17 right now. I've done 50 deals in the last three years. And on every one of those houses, nobody asked me about my credit. So don't say credit is an excuse. I'll show you how to do that Wednesday. The link is in the comments. Go ahead and sign up. Oh, uh, you're worried about evictions. Oh, but Whitney, what if somebody doesn't pay me? And what if they punch a hole in my sheetrock? What am I going to do? Call your attorney. My attorney was on here earlier. In fact, I think both of my attorneys were on here earlier. If somebody doesn't pay me, I just call them. Hey, Evan, Tyler, this dude over here didn't pay me. Do your thing. It's like, not a big deal. Don't worry about evictions. Julie says hire a property manager. They handle those too. Uh, and if you're doing lease options, then you should have got enough money down up front that if they didn't pay for a month, you still have their money that you can use to make the payment. Using other people's money is brilliant. Um, another thing is I talked to, one of the houses I bought this summer actually, the husband was completely, completely risk adverse. Like he didn't want to put, you know, $10 down on attending this high school reunion because he didn't know what the menu was going to be. Okay, like he just didn't want to know th about the unknown. All right, well, there's ways in real estate to mitigate that, to make it smaller so that you know what to expect. Okay, if you buy a crack house, expect on having a bad foundation, it's going to need a roof. If you buy a crack house in a war zone, Expect a couple of months where you don't get paid. Uh, one of our one of the ladies at the Biltmore retreat said that she knows a guy, um, and this was somewhere up north where it snows a lot. And when it snows, this is on a mobile home. When it snows, it's real easy to get to his trailer and hook up to it. So when it's cold and when it snows, this dude pays like clockwork. Pays up his late fees, pays up everything. Because he knows they can get a truck in there and pull his trailer out and evict him for clothes on him. But in the summer, he doesn't pay as well because he lives in a swamp and they can't get a truck back there. But as soon as he knows that trucks are coming, he starts paying. He pays his late fees too. But there's ways that we can look at rental histories we can screen our tenants so that we know what to expect, okay? There's no secrets in real estate. Everything is required to be out in the open. Everything, except your panty color. Don't wanna know that. Um, okay, Brian also told me something this morning that I wasn't really aware of because I just don't really think about it this way, but a lot of people in real estate are sleazy scammers, his words, not mine, okay? And that being said, 
you know, you go to these boot camps and somebody's up front and it's never who promised to be there and it's always just somebody and they're rattling on and before you know it, they're, they're talking about your credit card and how you can up your credit card payment so that you can get into their big program so that they can finally tell you how to buy real estate. That's crap. All right? That's complete crap. Because by the time you get done paying those people, you could have probably bought, with cash, several different houses. It's the proverbial carrot in front of your face. Pay more and I'll tell you more. Pay more and I'll tell you more. Pay more and I'll tell you more. Let me tell you. You can get into my group program. I'll tell you everything I know. You can get into a one-on-one -on -one for three months and we will work one-on-one -on -one for three months. You can get on a one-on-one -on -one for six months and all you do is get more time with me. It's never really that, oh, pay more, and then I'll tell you my super secrets. No secrets. It just depends on how much time and how much commitment you want to give me to actually achieving your goals. That's what it is. And if you do what I tell you to do, you'll make 10 times the investment that you had in me, like 12 weeks or less, 6 months or less. In fact, the women and men, because I've started working with men too, but the people that are working with me now, this time next year, they're going to be hanging out at the bank, cash and checks. And those of you that I've talked to that are like, oh, no it, I'll wait, I'll get in later, you're cute, go do your thing, teach all these other people, I'm just going to hang out here. Those people better look around because they're going to be in the same spot next year that they are this year. They're probably going to be in the same dead-end, boring job in five years, in ten years. And then they're going to wake up and they're going to want to retire, but they've got like 50 grand and they don't know what to do with it and they're too old and slow to actually get out and try to work it at this point, so they just die. Mostly mental. They just give up. Um, you also don't need a whole bunch of money. If you have a whole bunch of money, it's easier. But if you don't, I'm going to cover three or four different ways on Wednesday on the webinar how you don't need any money to get started. You don't need any credit. You don't need any banks. Thank you, Julie. There's the link again to sign up for the webinar. And the last thing that Brian said that he was worried about is the legalities. What does he need in place? Does he need to have an LLC? Does he need to have um, insurance set up? Does he need to have a certain pot of change in case something goes wrong? What does he need? Who does he need to hire? Who needs to be on his team? Does he need to have contractors? Um, one of my students actually, before they signed up with me, they sent me this long email list about all these questions that they had and I was like, I replied back to them and I was like, that's what I teach you in week one. That's what I teach you in week 10. That's what I teach you in week six, seven, and eight. Why are you waiting? Why are you wasting money? Why are you wasting time? When I could have fixed all these problems already. Last thing I'm going to tell you before I let you go and before you go sign up for the webinar is that I have spent like seven years figuring this system out. Blood, sweat, and tears, y'all. So that I could teach you what I know to lessen your learning curve. There's no reason you should have to learn an old, slow, boring way. And there's no reason you should have to go... Uh, like just give up a whole weekend of your life and pay to get into this stupid boot camp to start with and then pay for a hotel and pay for food and then get hit for a buy-up program. Like there's no reason you have to waste your time like that. When you can join my webinar on Wednesday, get in my program and get started today, tonight. You know, this woman in Spain, she's originally from France, she's on a completely different time schedule than I am. She can literally 
be learning about real estate and the systems, they're going to work everywhere because people are dying and getting divorced and getting transferred at jobs and needing to sell properties everywhere, especially all over the country, all over America. But she's going to use my systems, my strategies, my scripts, translated into the non-redneck language, but she's going to get deals in Europe. So what's your excuse? Because this stuff is going to work all across the country. You don't need to be in Tennessee and talk to a bunch of rednecks for this to work. If you have money, great. If you don't have money, great. If you got bad credit, great. If you got, you know, three kids and they're in college and you're spinning out your ears and what you really want is a real estate portfolio so that you can retire and go play with your grandkids because they're coming in the next couple of years. Not a hint, mom. Don't get excited. You got to get started now. Now. November and December is the best time to buy real estate because you know what happens in January and February? People start getting their tax returns back and they got to spend that money or they feel like they're going to waste it on TVs and uh, Red Lobster and other crap. When people get their tax returns back, they want to buy real estate. And if you didn't nut and save up real estate deals in November and December and early January, then you have nothing to sell and you are not going to make any money in January and February. So if you think winter is a bad time to get started in real estate, you are so completely wrong and we definitely need to talk. I don't know who decided that spring and summer was the best time. Maybe it's the best time for pretty home buyers, but for investments and for people that really need to make something happen, buyer season, seller season, whatever, I think it's winter. <coughs> Excuse me. I need some water. Your excuses are dead to me. Just like your 401k is dead money. The only way to have good live money is to know that you're going to make 10 grand a month every month when your tenants pay. That's the only way you're going to be able to retire. Because if you think you're going to retire on a 401k and you see that money go out in $10,000 increments, how long are you going to be able to live? It's a very real possibility that if you're living on dead money in a 401k when you go to retire, there's a good chance you're going to outlive your money and then you're going to have to depend on the government and basically be on welfare and they're going to put you in a 10 by 10 concrete room where they can hose down the poop. <laughs> or you're going to have to move in with your kids. That's scary. I know you don't want to have to move in with your daughter-in-law. <laughs> You need live money. And real estate is live money. Sign up for the webinar. I'm tired of hearing your excuses. I want to see you take some action. Action, boys! Action! <laughs> and if you have any questions, send them to me. There's the link one more time. Thank you so much, Julie. You're so good at this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's the link one more time. I had 40 people signed up. When I started this thing, I expect to have 85, 90, 100. I will teach anybody and everybody how to get started on their first rental, whatever, Wednesday, 7.05. That's Eastern time. Eastern time. All right? And if you feel like I've hit something tonight and you're like, you know what? Forget it. I don't even want to watch the webinar. I'll, you know, catch it later. I just want to know what she knows. Send me a private message and we'll figure that out too. If you're ready to get started, let's get started. No sense in waiting on Wednesday if you can get a deal tomorrow. The lady that signed up with me tonight, she signed up. We talked this morning at 1130 and she paid at 5, all Eastern time. We spoke... I got in the car, left Georgia about 5.30. We were on the phone from 5.30 to almost 7, talking about the deals, because she just kept coming up with more ideas and more houses and more sellers and more buyers and just more, more, more. And she was like, oh my gosh, this is like completely changed my world and I haven't even really got into it yet. I was like, I know. That's how it happens. 
So, no more excuses. Take some action. I will see y'all probably tomorrow, but definitely on Wednesday. Bye. Good night. Share this with somebody else who needs a rental property. Rental portfolio, rental property. No excuses. This is a no excuse zone.